You're listening to Blue Collar CEO, the podcast that's all about helping you build a better, more profitable, and more sustainable home service business. Each week, we'll cover a different topic that will help enable your company to move forward to success. And here's your host, Ryan Redding. What is up, Blue Color CEOs? It's Ryan, and it is so good to be with you today. I uh, hope uh, things are going well for you in your world. Hey, I'm getting ready to introduce you to Daniel Simon. Daniel is the CEO and founder of Coast. They're a modern fleet card and expense management platform that helps companies govern their fuel and fleet spending. The co-founder, chief tech officer, and chief operations officer of a company called Bread, they were a tech-driven digital payments company that was acquired back in 2020. Daniel, actually, he's an experienced and venture-backed entrepreneur who loves hands-on work of building great products and building outstanding teams. He's a graduate of both Yale School of Management and Yale Law School, which makes him crazy smart. We're going to be talking all about Coast and this uh, whole fleet spending management product that he's developed. If you have any company over, let's say, over 10 trucks in size, this is an episode you want to totally pay attention to. Uh, if you're under 10, no shade to you. This All this might not be really relevant at this point, but take notes because as you keep growing, uh, you're going to be putting this stuff in the play. But without further ado, let me introduce you to Daniel. Daniel, I know you're a crazy busy human. So thank you so much for taking the time to, to stop and like talk with us for a few. But for those who maybe don't yet know who you are or what your company does, look, can we just start there for a sec? Like, who are you? What do you do? Sure. Uh, so... I am Daniel, I'm the, the, and thanks for having me on. By the way, it's a pleasure. Um, yeah. I, uh, I'm the uh, the founder and, and CEO of a company called Coast. Um, so Coast is a expense management software um, and a charge card that's particularly designed for the needs of companies that operate fleets of vehicles. So I think pretty relevant for some of the folks that listen to the show. Um, uh, you know, just by background, it's it's um, you know in terms of how I came to be doing this. Um, you know, I grew up as a software engineer in, in financial services for a number of years, like building systems for like, banks and asset managers. And um, that was a great career. But, you know, I was interested in other stuff. I ended up going to law school, business school. Uh, and then I started my first company coming out of grad school, which was uh, sort of a buy now, pay later kind of a company called Bread, uh, which I co-founded uh, in 2014, 10 years ago now. Um, and that was um, a business that allowed you to make purchases online and split it into monthly installments. And we worked with some really great e-commerce merchants and grew the business. And uh, we ended up selling it in uh, 2020 to a uh, major issuer of store cards. Um, so that was a really great experience, sort of uh, co-running that company for six years and taking a lot of that uh, sort of experience that I learned in credit and in payments that was in uh, consumer shopping context and applying it now really to this commercial application uh, to help the owners of companies that operate these suites. Yeah, that's so I'm kind of curious to pull some of those strings a bit because that's a, I mean, you skimmed through some of your, like, your academic sort of background, but you have some legit cred on your uh, resume or CV. And then for a lot of people going off and doing any sort of startup software company is uh it depends on their temperament, but it could be a nightmare. It's a lot of stress, uh, a, a lot of, you know, the, the grind. So here are like you successfully get out of it in a essentially a, a B2C sort of platform. Now you're getting in a B2B sort of platform doing it all again. Why? Wh like what about this particular application did you see a need for? Like how did you even see the need to begin with? Uh, coming from something that has like a lot of scale, like a direct consumer product would like bread. And be able to say, hey, here's something we can do that has a very niche specialized application for people with fleet vehicles. Here's a problem that they may or may not know that they have. And here's what I'm going to try to solve. Like, what was that journey like? Yeah. And yeah, you're right, by the way, about sort of having a startup journey is, is a pretty stressful and terrifying thing. But like, it's, it's, it's hard to, to imagine doing much else. Like once you get really into it, like, um, uh, you know, I'm at the age where uh, I don't have kids. All, all of my friends have kids. Uh, I look at uh, sort of what happened to them. And I feel like a similar thing happened to me with a venture back startup. It's like all consuming. It's stressful. It's terrifying. Yeah, and yeah. I'm having the time of my life. And, and, and here I am like having my second kid, so to speak. Um, <laughs> but uh, in, in terms of like how I came to this particular problem, um, 
you know, when I left Red, I knew I was going to do something new in financial technology and fintech. I didn't have like the thing that was like really exciting to me. So I kicked around for a while. I was an advisor to a handful of startups. I was an entrepreneur in residence at a Silicon Valley venture capital firm. And um, it was actually pretty great after six years, like laser focused on the problems of one business to be like, well, what's everybody else working on? You know, like what are the other problems and challenges out there? What's, yeah, what's exciting? Yeah, yeah. What's, what's not exciting to me? And it was really in the context of those conversations that some investors said to me, hey, Daniel, you should take a look at this whole fleet payments thing. And I said, what's that? And I looked at it and I was like, oh my God, I haven't been able to think about anything else ever since. And so I ended up starting this company at the end of 2020 uh, and I've been off the races. And I looked at a lot of stuff in 2020, like a lot. Nothing got me anywhere near as excited uh, as Coast. And, and in, in some ways, for a lot of the reasons that rhymed with um, you know, stuff that got me so excited starting my first company, Bread, 10 years ago, uh, we have this like massive market in fleet payments um, that very few people in technology are thinking about. Um, that's uh, really dominated by a handful of players that aren't always treating their customers the best that they could and, you know, like aren't always built on sort of the most innovative technology, but they're solving like a really big need and pain point for like a really big sector of the economy. Like I look at that, I feel I should be able to build something absolutely huge. Um, and, And to really bring like a lot of the innovations that in the last 15 years of FinTech you've seen for applications like we were talking about that are consumer focused or that help people who are in certain other kinds of businesses, like, you know, like tech startups or big enterprise companies, et cetera, like to bring that innovation to this massive sector of the market of people who are running real world businesses, HVAC installation companies, plumbing companies, trades businesses, construction businesses, transportation businesses that haven't really enjoyed that innovation up until now. I just saw that as a huge opportunity and it just got me really excited. It's, it's so funny that uh, we're having this conversation now because I was having a conversation with the other day, but fairly recently about the kind of, uh, how do I say this? The lack of awareness that a lot of people in the trades have with like the efficiencies of their fleet and their dispatch and all things like just not only about um, minimizing expense by route optimization, but also like maximizing profit, right? To say, Hey, if we route tech a, to jobs one, two, and three, he's going to make more money than if we were out tech B to jobs one, two, and three. Um, and there's like this influx of, uh, I'm going to use the word big data, even though it's a little bit dated and it's a little bit cliche, but there, there's never been more information available to home service companies as there is right now in this day and age. And yet so many people don't know how to leverage those insights. They don't know what sort of impact they can expect to see by paying attention to the, some of these like levers that they can pull. So when you, when you're talking to like an end user and let's, uh, I know it's probably gonna be all over the gamut from somebody who's like a, a large enterprise that has a, a fleet of th- thousands of thousands of vehicles deployed across time zones versus somebody who's like got 10 trucks that they're running in Charlotte, North Carolina. What sort of, uh, like what sort of differences or interest or even confusion do you feel like people have who aren't familiar with what sort of benefit a product like Coast could provide for them? Do you, do you find much confusion or apprehension or slow to move-ness? Well, so, so the, the interesting, and by the way, like you're absolutely right about sort of the opportunities to increase profit and increase revenue to increase profit and not just by controlling expenses. Right? People don't go into the trades businesses to uh, do expense management, right? They don't go into the home services businesses to do uh, expense management. Like they go into it because they want to grow their business. They want to grow their profit, right? And the, the thing that's exciting to us is helping use software and data to your point to help them to do exactly that, right? To, to spend less time in overseeing your drivers and doing spot checks of odometer readings in your parking lot and you know running through receipts and if you have like automation and control and visibility you can focus on what got you into the business and that's what gets us excited helping our customers too um but to your point like like uh, the, the good thing is for us and you're right we, we we do run across that whole gamut we've got the the the, the 10 truck guy and we've got you know vehicle fleets that we serve that have more than a thousand vehicles as well um and everything in between. Uh, it's a very fragmented market, as you know. Um, the um, uh, the good thing is that they know that they need a fleet card or a fuel solution, right? They know that they've got the majority of their personnel or workforce that's in the field, which means that they need 
uh, control. Like you want to make sure that when you give the technician who works for you the company credit card so they can buy what they need when they take in the van out to do their job, you need that control, security, visibility, reporting. You need specialized software that you don't just get from like any old like bank credit card, right? So you want, you want to make sure that your people are buying like the right grade of gas. They're not going into the convenience store of the gas station to buy potato chips and cigarettes, right? Like, like they're, they're not, you know, filling up their personal car or the car of the guy in line that they're selling gas to at a discount, right? Um, or doing other wacky stuff. And then, then most of your employees, you know, like are, are, are ethical, loyal people, you know, but there's always going to be some who aren't always at all times. Um, and there's always abuse and waste and fraud that happens in that kind of a field use case, which is why these big incumbents have existed for a long time, providing solutions um, specifically designed for uh, this kind of need. And controlling expenses, to your point, is like really important for a business's bottom line. Like it's about sort of working capital planning and float. Like all of that needs to be proactively uh, managed. So free cards give companies the tools they need to empower their workforce when they're in the field, while giving managers like the trust and visibility that they need to avoid uh, abuse and waste. So we don't really find that people are unfamiliar with the product category. One of the things that tends to sort of really open their eyes, though, is how different we are uh, as a modern reinvention of the solution from what they've gotten used to, to these companies that have been around for decades offering sort of stuff within um, this category. And to your point, a lot of that can be because of the insights and visibility that we can get. We, for instance, connect to vehicles telematics data, right? So the data that you're talking about, you know, in terms of like um, knowing where your vehicles are at all times, understanding gauge readings, odometer readings, fuel levels, et cetera, intersecting that with the purchase information they have about what they're buying can give them even that greater degree of insight to be able to make better decisions for their business and for their fleet, particularly if you can connect it to the other systems that they might be using, whether it's their field services management software, their fleet management software, et cetera. Um, so yeah, co- co- customers like of all sh- sizes, generally speaking, unless you're really small, like if you, if you have like six trucks and you've had your first instance of fuel theft by your employees and then somebody tells you about fuel cards and you end up looking us up and then we tell you about it for the first time. There's some education that goes there. But generally speaking, like once you're over 10, like just about everybody has figured out that they need something here. What we open their eyes to is sort of like how much better this can be than what they're used to. So what for most people, let's say that they're coming up on the 10 truck. So they, they cross the six truck, six truck, they've, they've had somebody like steal gas in their car, like whatever, like nonsense stuff. And for a business that's running six trucks, like that might be a big uh, percentage of impact. You know, like there's just not a lot of fluff. There's on the margin of six truck shop. Um, so cool that that fifty dollar that fifty dollar tank or that hundred dollar tank is really impactful. Uh, what is it that when you start talking to people who are like nine trucks, ten trucks, starting to look for more sophisticated solutions like Coast? What preconceived notions do you think that they have from other products on the market? And what makes your difference? Is it is it really access to like the vehicle specific data and transportation, or is it other things that I, I don't even know to ask right now? Yeah, so so we think that like we've created like a new generation of spend management software that helps reduce friction and make your use of financial services like really speak the language of your. Uh, business. And like I said, your bank software isn't the one that's going to be providing you um, with those insights. Like what we see our customers doing, even some of the mid-sized customers, is relying on a lot of paper processes. Like even when they're like eight-figure revenue companies that go for 10 million bucks, you know, there's often like a dedicated back office employee at a service business, you know, who does a lot of the expense reconciliation, collects Mm -hmm. receipts, deals with the accounting system, right? There's like a printout that's like on the wall of like, you know, like who's got what truck and something changes they cross it out with a pencil and things like that yes Uh Uh, um and like like uh you know like we love that employee and like you know like the system has been kind of working for a long time but we know there's like some abuse of the credit card like we said uh, by the techs who are going out there that's just not getting caught right and we know the process is inefficient and that person's spending a lot of time every month on all this instead of spending time on revenue growth instead of spending time on marketing etc um and that's really where we come in and show them the software. Um, and, and it's really, that's the aha moment that I was talking about uh, earlier. Some of the things that people don't necessarily expect from a solution like this is the ability to really feel that they know where the spend is actually going. Traditional solutions uh, that are offered by the folks who have been in the space and are, that are built on very old technology have typically relied on systems of 
for instance, vehicle cards, like you send people cards, they make them permanently attached to like a particular kind of vehicle where they leave them in the glove box or the visor of the vehicle. And then when your tech gets into the vehicle, when they put the card in to a gas pump at the forecourt of a convenience store, let's say, there's a little dial pad that's on the on, on the gas pump, on the automated fuel dispenser, where they're prompted for, you know, what's your vehicle uh, identification number? What's your driver ID? What's your PIN? What's your odometer reading? And like the drivers, first of all, they absolutely hate this experience. They'll get out of the cab of the vehicle in the yeah. freezing cold. They've forgotten what the odometer says. And then the data is really bad because they hit 99999, right? And like now you can't uh, know what that actually was. Pins are shared between drivers like all the time. Like it's a very insecure system. Um, and as a result, what you see is that the fleet managers who are trying to make decisions about the total cost of ownership of their vehicles, when they need maintenance, how much they're spending, et cetera, one of, the, one of the biggest assets of their business, which is their vehicle fleet, like they don't trust the data. Coast system is actually like completely different. We've reinvented it from the ground up. We send people just um, uh, completely replaceable plastic cards, like a stack of them. You can keep a bunch in the drawer of the office. You can give them to your drivers to keep in their wallets if you want. You can leave them in the vehicles. It works the same way because what's changed is that since the previous generation of these fuel card offerings came up, everybody now has one of these, a, a mobile phone, right? So we can make use of the better data and control and security that comes from that. You get into the vehicle at the beginning of your routes for the day. You pull the card out of the glove box. You text the card's ID, like ABC123 to Coast. We say, oh, is it Ryan? Because your boss put you in the system with that phone number. Are you still driving Mercedes Sprinter van license plate XYZ? Yes. Okay, now all the transactions that you attempt are going to go through the policies that have been applied to you, that have been applied to that, that vehicle, and the combination thereof. We get the line item detail about sort of how many gallons and the price per gallon and grade of gas, and we report all that. Something looks off. We can stop it. We can flag it. Like we know the GPS location of the vehicle. Why are you trying to make a purchase when you're far away from the vehicle that you're supposed to be driving? We can decline that. We can flag that. We know how much your fuel gauge says is available in the tank. Why are you trying to buy more gallons? Like we can decline that. We can flag that. We can limit that. Like all of that provides the control and insight. And what we find is that our customers, when they switch to coast from uh, one of these old school payment methods or another way of paying for fuel, uh, they have a fuel savings of nine to ten percent on their bill every month, and like while this is not the single biggest expense in a fleet business, like or, or in a fleet operating business's business, it's still quite significant. And moreover, they save sixteen hours a month of time, and that to me is like even more powerful, frankly, because you know that's sixteen hours of reconciliation, oversight, and also creating like sort of this attitude of mistrust with your employees because like i said most of them are perfectly honest but you now have to like interrogate all of them if you have the security that somebody authenticated with the device that we know that they had and you can actually trace the expenses to the right vehicle and driver and see what's really going on you don't need to have that kind of relationship with your employees there's more trust that can be created there uh, and, and better working environment for everyone so yeah it, it's quite a different way of operating the product that provides more security more visibility more control and more trust in the workplace um, and that like when people see it, like they start by asking, hey, how many cents off the gallon is it going to be? Or what's the, the, the price, et cetera. And then I show them the software and they say, oh, this is different. This is what we need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting as I, as I hear you talk about it, because it totally sounds like a really, uh, uh, for lack of a better term, so not to, not to diminish the product at all. It sounds such an obvious solution. It's <laughs> almost like, why the hell hasn't this been developed yet? Like this is crazy well, makes well, sense I mean, for a lot of reasons, right? I mean, it, it's, it sounds like a really legit pain point. It sounds like a really valuable problem. It sounds like a really solid tech. It's almost like, how else would one build this? Like just hearing you walk through the alternatives, it's crazy. But I also, it, it also strikes me like that a lot of people, well, and again, I, because you serve such a large multi-industry customer base, that a lot of them probably are, I, I can imagine, I'll speak for the trades, plumbing, HVAC, electrical. There's There's a whole lot of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like apprehension about new tech. It's like, it's almost like there's technology overload. It's like, oh, you got to use the iPad and all you got to do this GPS tracker and all you got to do this camera and all you got to do, it's like, do the tech thing over and over and over and over, which sometimes I feel like people are like, great, roll their eyes. Here's another, here's another thing that I've got to teach my guys to do. And I can't even get them to, you know, wear a belt. What, like, take all that out take out all the this sort of like teaching new tech and companies adopting it and fully embracing this from a control standpoint, which makes tons of sense. Did I hear you correctly when you said most companies are going to 
save like reduce unnecessary spends by somewhere between nine to ten percent of fuel bill plus about ish 16 hours of just accounting and like payroll and bureaucratic time is that right? That, that that is the survey that we conducted. We we were we were ourselves like a little bit surprised at just how big the impact was uh, for our customers. And, and I'll speak about the sort of app apprehension of tech in, in, in a second as well. But like, um, yeah, uh, it's funny because you know as part of our sort of application to use the product to get onboarded, um, you have to provide us with certain information about your business, including we ask you to tell us how much do you spend per month on fuel. And then, like, we onboard a business, and I'll look at the numbers in the dashboards, and I'll see, hey, how come Ryan's business isn't spending what they said on their monthly fuel bill? And then I, you know, go talk to my head of sales, and I say, what's going on? And he'll talk to whoever was a salesperson that sold the deal, and I'll say, can you find out what's going on? Because my, my, my boss is hounding me about this. And, 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 um, uh, and they'll call up the customer, and I'll be like, no, we, we told you what we were spending on fuel, and we we're fully rolled out. It's just that we were getting like completely fleeced by our employees before we had it. No, it's, it, it, it's, it's really nuts. And, and, and also like, by the way, I mean, like we, we have a good savings network too. I mean, we, we offer two cents per gallon anywhere you buy. That's from, that's our base uh, discount, but we also have great partnerships with like Exxon Mobil kicks in another couple of cents at uh, Speedway and Seven um, Eleven. anywhere throwing another five cents. So a total of seven cents for a close customer racetrack raceway in the Southeast is six cents. Uh, you know, Casey's in the Midwest is six cents, and, and and that's growing all the time. Um, so uh, that's a contributor uh, uh, as well. But in terms of the apprehension to to the new tech, like first off, yeah, it's kind of hard to ignore that impact to your business. But it's also really easy to roll out. Notice that I said it's based on uh, SMS uh, texting. No, I didn't say a mobile app, right? Like we we are launching a mobile app for those customers who want to use it um, now. But like we didn't when we started want people to have to embrace yet another thing to download, right? Like another app. Mm, yeah, By the way, who knows yeah. like what kinds of employees or contractors or temporary workers, you know, people in a lot of these businesses might be using. We just didn't have confidence they could mandate, okay, now for your fuel payments, you need to have this thing on your phone. But everybody texts, right? Like we've got customers who are using like dumb flip phones, T9 predictive text using Coast and it works oh beautifully. Oh my gosh, like, that's like, a throwback. Like, um, we needed something that would... Yeah, it's it's still out there somewhere. Like, um, That's crazy. but anyway, we we needed something that would work for everyone, and and, and we did that, and and so like we w wanted to not let people's apprehension about yet another thing really stand in their way. When we find that like customers rolling out the Coast product to their technicians, like it's really pretty quick. Like it's probably like a couple of days for people to all get used to like the whole check in process and how they support other stuff. Another thing that I'll mention, by the way, which which has really opened customers' eyes about what can be different in this category, is that you know in the past a lot the the, the majority of these kinds of solutions aren't Visa or Mastercard cards. They're like special proprietary networks that the incumbents have operated that only work at the gas stations and other relevant stores that like are uh, important for a fleet's business. Um, we partner with Visa, which means that one, we're universally accepted wherever Visa is accepted, which is basically everywhere. But two, it allows us to do things that sometimes the incumbents don't. So we give people in the software the ability to set really precise controls on policies for who in their fleet can spend how much and where and when and what categories on other kinds of field expenses. So, you know, you have parking, parking tickets, tolls, car washes, parts and maintenance, and also just picking up extra supplies at Home Depot when you didn't get them at the warehouse, right? Um, uh, so you have that really precise control. You don't need to have a second program for all that other stuff, like a you know general purpose corporate card, which is an invitation for abuse in this category, or a cumbersome system of receipts and reimbursements. You have one solution, but with really clear visibility on what's going on. And because it's working over SMS, like you can set policies that require for certain categories, like that Home Depot purchase, to snap a picture of the receipt through the texting channel, and that'll get attached to the uh, transaction in the co system and then maybe push it into your accounting system beyond that because we have integrations with those as well. Um, so it's a lot of stuff to make things easier, a lot of ability to sort of like do more but with greater control that people just haven't been used to before. And that makes it easy, I think, to overcome some of that apprehension that people might have, which you're absolutely right, saying, oh boy, do I really want another system in the stack? If we snap in easily enough and it's using channels that people already understand, like we can get over it. That actually sounds crazy cool if somebody if somebody's listening now uh 
running, let's say six truck, six truck, 10 truck, a hundred truck shop. They want to learn more about coast, maybe demo it, see if it makes sense for them. What's the best next step somebody could take to learn more in checking out coast for themselves? For sure. Um, so I would send people to our site, which is coastpay.com. So coast, like, you know, East coast or West coast, C-O-A-S-T, pay, P-A-Y.com. Um, there you can, uh, first off, there's an interactive demo right on the site. Um, uh, but you can also ask to speak to someone in sales or you can actually go straight into the application. It takes like a couple of minutes uh, to do. It doesn't affect your credit score or anything like the card doesn't it's not personally guaranteed. It's just a commercial product uh, that your business takes out. Um, uh, and in many cases, we can tell you just immediately uh, in a fully automated way, uh, whether you're qualified and what your credit line would be and um, uh, and you can sign up right away. Um, uh, sometimes, you know, might need to be reviewed, but most of the time it's actually um, pretty automated. Um, so yeah, I would uh, go to coastpay.com, uh, go straight to the application if you like, ask to speak to sales or poke around and learn more about the product coastpay.com. I'll make sure that that's linked in the show notes. Daniel, you've done, I mean, having two awesome products like this is, uh, it's really hard to do well. And it sounds like uh, bread was awesome. Coast is coming around on the heels. Seems like an awesome product, awesome solution for anybody that has a fleet of any size, like over, say over 10-ish trucks. Um, seriously, thank you so much for the work you put into this to make the trades better. Loved having you on. Daniel, I'm going to make sure everyone points to coastpay.com. And I know you're busy. Thank you so much for taking time to stop by, man. It was my, my pleasure, Ryan. I really enjoyed the conversation and really appreciate getting a chance to chat. This episode was hosted by Ryan Redding, author of the book on digital marketing for plumbing and HVAC contractors and founder of Leveragey, the digital marketing solution for serious home service companies. You can subscribe to Blue Collar CEO on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Visit us online at bluecollar.ceo and find us on Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week with another awesome episode. See you soon.